Hello YouTube, it's Tony. So today I'll show you a 1 to 99 or 120 herb lore guide for 2019. Now this guide's geared towards main accounts, but I'll try to make an Iron Man version of this in the future. Here are the useful items. I'll start with XP multipliers. This is the best skill to train on double XP weekend because it saves you a lot of money and time. There are more to list, but these are the most common XP multipliers in the game. The next item we have are portable wells. When you mix a potion near that, you'll get 10% more herbal XP plus a 5% chance of generating an extra potion. Although it's a treasure hunter item, you can buy from the GE or share with others. The FC for sharing this is portables. I'll leave the live spreadsheet link in the description. The next item we have is a scroll of cleansing. This is a permanent reward from Dungeoneering, and it requires 49 herb lore and Dungeoneering. When you mix potions, there's a 10% chance to save a secondary ingredient. There's also a 12.5% chance to mix a potion twice as fast. Trust me, this is well worth unlocking. The next useful item we have is the Botanist Outfit. Wait, 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 I meant Botanist Outfit. <laughs> I originally pronounced this wrong in my other video. Wearing this entire set will give you 6% more herbal XP. You can obtain this either from Flash Powder Factory Minigame or Treasure Hunter. If you want a guide on Flash Powder, I'll leave it in the description. If you don't want to get this outfit, that's completely fine, because this minigame is not only annoying, but it does take a while to get the entire set. We also have the modified Botanist Mask, and this is a skilling add-on. There's a 5% chance to duplicate potions. Yeah, this is really nice for saving you some money. Flash Powder Outfit. By wearing any 3 pieces, there's a 10% chance of generating a 4-dose potion instead of a 3-dose potion. Unfortunately, the botanist outfit does not inherit the effect. Because of this, I don't think it's worth getting unless you're an Iron Man, although it can save you a bit of money here. Botanist Amulet. By wearing this amulet, there's a 5% chance of creating a 4-dose potion instead of a 3-dose potion. Each amulet comes with 5 charges. What's really annoying about these amulets is that they do not stack in the bank. You have to be prepared with a lot of free bank space. Here are the things that boost your herbler level. Skill level boost will drain 1 level after 1 minute, so this is not ideal for the long term. However, if you were to log in and log out, this resets the timer. For the pulse cores, you can just leech them on double XP weekend, or pretty much any place that places a lot of portables. People will just pop them very very often. The level boost for God Banner is consistent all the way. This helped my Iron Man a lot here, so I do suggest you unlock this. Then for the spicy stews, I don't really recommend this. Finally, the last useful item we have is the perfect Juju Herbler Potion. You'll get 5% more Herbler XP, but it's only for combination potions. Then there's a 10% chance of finding a combination potion recipe when you're doing Dungeoneering. Now that I've talked about the useful items, let's talk about how to train Herblore. What I recommend is you buy an unfinished potion, then mix a secondary ingredient on this. You'll end up making 3 dose potions. What you want to do is create a bank preset for your inventory. In general, you want 14 of each unfinished potion plus the secondary ingredient. In order to load a bank preset really quickly, click the portable well immediately after you hit the bank preset key. At the same time, just hold the space bar. Ideally, you should angle your camera so that you can click this immediately. You should expect anywhere from 2600 to 3000 potion mixes per hour. It really depends on your lag and how perfect these clicks are. I mixed 2900 of these in an hour, and I'll leave the footage link in the description. You can try one ticking the last potion if you want optimal speed. In order to do so, just pre-click the secondary ingredient, then hover over the unfinished potion, and finally click when you're about to mix the last potion. Here are the herb lore quests for low levels. I know a lot of people don't like doing quests, but at the very least I would recommend you complete Jungle Potion and Druidic Ritual. This is because it unlocks so many quests. The first potions you'll make are attack potions. This requires a Guam Potion unfinished plus an Eye of Newt. You'll need 283 attack potions from level 9 or 114 from level 22. 26 to 38, you'll do energy potions. It requires a Hairlander potion plus chocolate dust. I know this is quite expensive, but the destination is really short. You'll only need 292 energy potions. From 38 to 52, you'll do prayer potions. You'll need 969 prayer potions to 52, and this will give you 260k XP per hour. 
This is at the rate of 2700 potions per hour. Once you hit level 49, please unlock Scroll of Cleansing. I know some people might suggest doing summoning potions, but these ingredients are in pretty low trade volume. From 52 to 55, you'll do Super Energy Potions. At this moment, they're profitable because of the new stamina potions. I'm not sure how much longer they'll profit for, so I kept this at only 55. From 55 to 66, you'll do Super Strength Potions. I find that this is a safer bet compared to Super Energy Potions because these are always in demand for overloads. Usually it's very cheap, and sometimes it actually profits. To get to 66, you'll need 2,397. The next potion you want to mix are Super Defense Potions. This is yet again another overload ingredient. From doing this, you'll get 445k XP per hour. From 72 to 81, you'll do Super Ranging Potions. Now Wine of Zamrak is actually much cheaper these days. This has a high material cost, but they usually sell for a very high price. If you want to stop at level 76, you'll do Super Magic Potions afterwards instead. From 81 to 88, or you can stop at level 94, you will do Ceradamon Brews. Ceradamon Brews are consistently cheap, while other times they might actually profit. A lot of people in high level PVM will end up drinking these, so they're consistently in good demand. I've listed you the amounts you need for 88 and then level 94. You want to stop at 88 if you want to do extreme potions for overloads. If you didn't stop at 88 for overloads, you'll do prayer renewals from 94 onwards. Prayer renewals are generally a loss, but they are not that expensive. This is overall a nice cheap alternative compared to overloads. If you have Moritania Legs 4, there's a 20% chance of mixing a 4 dose prayer renewal instead of a 3 dose. Unfortunately, this only works in Mauritania. You'll need 24.3k prayer renewals to get to 99. You'll get 564k XP per hour from doing this. Because in Mauritania there's no bank chest, here is how you take advantage of both Portable Well and Mauritania Legs 4. You want to start at the Port Famaz's bank. Stand north of the plant that's just right outside the bank. Then you want to place the well. Afterwards, go back to the bank inside and align yourself towards the closed bank booth nearby. In order to use the banker, don't click the bank booth. Instead, what you want to do is click the ghost banker. This way you do not move at all. When you quickly load the preset this time, just press the escape key immediately afterwards. So as you can see right here, I'm actually getting the well bonus. The next section I'll get into are the untradeable potions. At 84 and 85 respectively, you can do Adrenaline or Super Anti-Fires. For the Super Anti-Fires, you can wear a Desert Amulet 4, and this gives you a 20% chance of a 4-dose Super Anti-Fire instead of a 3-dose. It is best to use this at the Shantae Pass Bank Chest. This is really expensive, and it will cost you 30 GP per XP. I know that PVMing will pay itself back, but you don't need that many Adrenaline or Super Anti-Fires. From 88 onwards, we have the Extreme Potions for Overloads. This requires a 3 dose super potion plus the secondary ingredient. Then you need the extreme potions in order to make the overloads. Now this is where budgeting comes into play. You need to make 4000 of each extreme potion in order to get to 96 without any XP multipliers. Because of this, you'll end up having 1000 excessive overload supplies. From 96 to 99, you'll only need to make 3000 overloads. On the other hand, if you were to make 3000 of each extreme, you'll only get 94 herb lore, which is 1.33 mil XP short of 96. You can average around 650k to 772k XP per hour by mixing extreme potions. So, let's get into overloads, the fastest method in the game. It requires 96 herb lore, plus one of each 3 dose extreme potion, and a clean torso. Now for those who haven't reached 96 herb lore after making 3000 extremes, this is where skill boosts come in handy. Making overloads, you'll average around 2.5 million XP per hour. However, because it takes a lot of time to make extremes, you'll still average 1 million XP per hour. If you're making overloads from 94, you'll end up nearly at level 98. This is one of the reasons why I highly suggest you make overloads on double XP weekend. Here is the overload preset. Now you can only mix 4 overloads per inventory. However, if you're using a Beast of Burden, this allows you to mix up to 10 with a pack mammoth. Before you start making overloads, this is how you want to set this up. 
Go to your gameplay settings and then select destroy empty files when you're mixing potions. This is extremely important especially if you have a Beast of Burden preset. You then want to set up a keybind for take Beast of Burden. So as you're mixing overloads, just keep taking the Beast of Burden icon. Yeah, it will not interrupt the skilling actions. In an hour, you can make 2,500 overloads, or if you're using a Beast of Burden, this can be bumped to 2,900. The next set of potions I'll get into are the combination potions. Now this requires Plague's End quest complete. This is unlocked by talking to Lady Mailer, and you'll have to pay her a lot of money, plus for some of them, you have to have the potion recipe unlocked. There are a couple of ways to obtain recipes. Consistent yak cards are the best way to get this. Now combination potions aren't really worth it if you're only going for pure XP. However, a lot of people would end up using these potions over time by training combat or even doing bossing. Here are the overload variants I suggest you make. Now which overload you want to make entirely depends on the situation. Using any overload combination potion is actually cheaper than one overload itself. I find that Holy Overloads are the most budget-friendly overload in the game. Like I said, Combination Potions are not good XP, and their GP per XP is really expensive. Here are other notable Combination Potions. Super Prayer Renewal is actually tradable, and it's somewhat cheap as a training method. However, the trade volume isn't all that great for this, so I wouldn't really recommend this. Now the Perfect Plus Potion actually is really amazing for XP. This will give you the same amount of XP as Overloads, but there is one catch. Crystal Tree Blossoms will take a long time to stock up, so if you want to end up using this, do it on double XP weekend with maximum boosts. Here is the 99 plus section for training options. Now I've narrowed this down into two methods, whether you want to go super cheap or go all in on Overloads. I did not factor in double XP weekend or the possibility of making other combination potions. To be honest, I can't give you a rough estimate on how many overloads you'll end up making on average, as this is the worst case scenario. I'm very certain that nobody needs to make this many overloads. Here are the other training methods for Herblore. First, we have Wilderness Warbands, and this is a dangerous PvP activity. At level 99, you'll get 360k XP for free every single day, and this should take you around 12 minutes at most. There are several franchats for this, but unfortunately, <laughs> I can't really help you out on this because I don't do this myself. We also have Gobi Bands, and this is similar to War Bands. This time, it is a safe PvP activity. You'll get up to 48.5k XP free every single day, and it takes around 3 minutes. The FC for tracking which skills and which world it has is called Mini Games. I do have a guide on this, and I'll leave it in the description. Finally, we have the Irby Werby Distraction and Diversion. In order to get there, you want to traverse the Jilly course, and I've marked the location right on the minimap. When you go inside the roots, this is what you want to do. There are green glowing Zygomites that are walking towards the fire. Just click them and you'll get Herbler XP. Otherwise, you can collect purple corrupted herbs from the side and then deposit them to the fire. If you play this minigame wrong, there are absolutely no penalties. So anyways, just keep doing this until you reach 100 points. Yeah, that's gonna be a lot of moving around. This should take you around 5 minutes to do, and you'll receive a grand total of 22k to 30k Herbler XP. Just so you know, they actually do stack with XP modifiers. You can spend points on small XP lamp or save it up for other rewards. So to wrap this video up, here are the total costs for training Herblore. This is accurate as of July 24, 2019, and it does not include Double XP Weekend. Do note that since Double XP Weekend is tomorrow, you might have a hard time selling these finished potions. You'll notice here that it only costs you a measly 4.6 million to get to level 88 Herblore. This is only expensive going to 99 if you're trying to make 3000 overloads. For the 120 and 200 mil cost, 2.5 billion GP is the most you'll ever need to spend for overloads. Especially if you're trying to train past 99 Herblore, you should train it on double XP weekend plus use other XP modifiers. In doing so, you can shape the cost all the way down to under 1 billion. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already because I'll definitely be doing more 1-99 or 120 guides in the future.